welcome to story time. My name is Liana and I'm here with the Ada Community Libraries and today I'm joined with two of my very good friends. Hi friends. This little guy right here, this is Lily and this is her sister Oreo. Hi Oreo. And they're here to help me with story time today. They love reading books. Well, they love listening to me read books and they're very excited about today's topic, which is going to be all about the zoo. We're gonna read stories that are all about animals that live at the zoo. And poor little, poor little Oreo and Lily, they don't get to go to the zoo. They're too small. They don't get, they don't have tickets for little babies that are this small. So they have to hear all about the zoo through stories since they can't visit, but they're gonna be here listening, aren't you? They're gonna be here listening, and before they put their listening ears on, they're gonna help us with a song. And you will be able to sing along, I think. It's a pretty common tune, you might recognize it. It sounds like wheels on the bus. And we're gonna start with my other friend here, this sheep. So, the sheep at the zoo go ba, 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 ba. Ba, 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 the sheep at the zoo go ba, 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 all day long. Yeah, you knew how to sing that, didn't you? Okay, and how about this? The seahorse at the zoo goes nay, 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 nay. The seahorse at the zoo goes nay, nay, nay all day long and we've got one more friend here the wolf at the zoo goes woof 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 the wolf at the zoo goes woof 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 all day long the rats on the shoulder go squeak 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 Squeak, squeak, squeak. Squeak, squeak, squeak. The rats on the shoulder go squeak, squeak, squeak all day long. Thank you for helping. And I hope you're able to sing along. Lily and Oreo wish they could have heard you, but we are all getting very excited for our stories. So these little girls are going to go back into their box so that they can pay really good attention and listen. And while they go away, I want all of us to think about what kind of animal we would be if we lived at the zoo. So I've been thinking a lot about what kind of animal I would be if I lived at the zoo. And I think that maybe I would be a rabbit that lives in the petting zoo because sometimes I feel kind of small and nervous around strangers but I think once I get used to being around people I can be very friendly um, and one of my favorite animals that is not a rabbit is actually an elephant it is so different from a rabbit because they are very big um, they're very very smart uh, and they're very bold and I think sometimes when I feel like I'm being too much of a rabbit, it's good to remember that I can also be like an elephant. That's good to have a balance. Um, and with that, I wish I could hear what kind of animals you would be, um, but since I can't, we are going to start on our first book, which is Wild About Books by Judy Sierra and illustrated by Mark Brown. It all started the summer of 2002, when the Springfield librarian, Molly McGrew, by mistake drove her bookmobile into the zoo. Molly opened the door and she let down the stair, turned on the computer and sat in her chair. At first, all the animals watched from a distance, but Molly could conquer the strongest resistance. Look at that. Can you recognize any of these animals? I think I see a giraffe. I think
think I see a flamingo. I see, I see a Bigfoot. I see a tiger. And I see an elephant. By reading aloud from the good Dr. Seuss, she quickly attracted a mink and a moose, a wombat, an oryx, a lemur, a lynx, five elephant calves, and a family of skinks. Look at these elephant calves. They're a little bit smaller because they're calves. They're not adults, not yet. And I bet these are the skinks, but I'm not really sure. I've never met a skink before. Have you? In a flash, every beast in the zoo was stampeding to learn all about this new something called reading. Forsaking their niches, their nests, and their nooks, they went wild, simply wild, about wonderful books. Choosing thin books, and fat books, and cat in the hat books, and new books, and true books, and heaps of how-to books. Giraffes wanted tall books, and crickets craved small books, while geckos could only read stick-to-the-wall books. The pandas demanded more books in Chinese. Molly filled their requests, always eager to please. She even found waterproof books for the otter, who never went swimming without Harry Potter. Have you read Harry Potter or seen the movies? I like the books and the movies. Raccoons read alone, and baboons read in bunches, and llamas read, dra read dramas while eating their lunches. Hyenas shared jokes with the red-bellied snakes, and they howled and hissed till their funny bones ached. A tree kangaroo who adored Nancy Drew began solving mysteries right there at the zoo, such as, why were the bandicoots books overdue? Hmm, that's a good mystery. Maybe they checked out so many they got behind. It's hard to read fast sometimes. Gently, Molly taught lessons in treating books right, for the boa constrictor squeezed Crichter too tight. Baby bunnies mucked up the night moon with their paws, Giant termite, termites devoured the Wizard of Oz. Look at that. It would be very hard for the next person to read that book, wouldn't it? And Bear's love of books was completely outrageous. They licked all the pictures right off of the pages. Ooh. I don't think I'd want to read a book where all the pictures got licked off. And I bet the pages are still pretty soggy, too. That's yucky. Tasmanian devils found books so exciting that soon they had given up fighting for writing. They made up adventures so thrilling and new that the others decided to be authors too. Pythons wrote with their tails, penguins wrote with their bills, and porcupines wrote with their very own quills. How cool is that? They're all writing their own stories. At the new insect zoo, bugs were scribbling haiku. The scorpion gave each a stinging review. Do you know what that means? Stinging can mean, ow, you got stung by something and it hurts. It can also mean someone says something or writes something that might hurt your feelings, like pretentious, stinks, boring, redundant. That kind of stings if someone wrote that about your story. That would hurt your feelings a little bit. As the cheetah's new novel began to take shape, he read chapters each night till the Barbary ate. And although the gazelle couldn't spell very well, like everyone else, she had stories to tell. Imagine the hippo's enormous surprise when her memoir was given the Zulitzer Prize. Look at that, it's called Mud in My Blood. And she's very happy for winning her prize. With so many new books, Molly knew what to do. She hired 12 beavers, a stork, and a new, 
to build a branch library there at the zoo. Then the animals cried, we can do it ourselves. We can check the books out. We can put them on shelves. And they did, and they do, up to this very day. Three cheers for the zooberry. Hip, hip, hooray. Look at them. They're doing a lot of good work. Construction is very hard. When you visit the zoo now, you surely won't mind if the animals seem just a bit hard to find. They are snug in their niches, their nest, and their nooks, going wild, simply wild, about wonderful books. Look at all of them reading. They might be a little bit hard to find, but I would love to go to the zoo and see a bunch of animals reading. That would be, that would be a pretty cool sight. So thank you to Alfred A. Knopf for permission reading this book. And now that we have been sitting for a little while, we are going to do a little bit of stretching to get a little bit of pent up energy out. Okay, are we ready to do some stretches? We're gonna start really small with an animal that's not just at the zoo, but you might be able to find it in your backyard or maybe you have one as a pet. People have some unlikely pets. I know my pets are a little bit unusual. Um, so we are gonna start all the way on the ground like this and we're gonna be just like a frog. And to get out a little bit of our extra wiggles, we're gonna pop, pop, pop. Sometimes it helps to make frog sounds when we hop. Ribbit, ribbit, ribbit. It's very tiring, so feel free to keep hopping around like a frog if you have a little bit more energy than me, but then we're going to be like a giraffe, and we're going to stretch our back after all that frog hopping and reach towards the sky. We're going to reach up on our tiptoes with our arms up as high as they go. We're going to imagine that we're a giraffe reaching for a nice big green leaf that we're going to eat. Stretch as far as you can, and then we're gonna go whoop, all the way down. We're gonna pretend that our arms are an elephant trunk, and we're gonna swing back and forth. Ooh. Ooh. Just like an elephant. Ooh. Back and forth, getting all the rest of our little wiggles out. Before we go on to our last book, you ready? Whew. That sure was tiring. I'm glad we're on our final book, One Night in the Zoo by Judith Kerr, because I am ready for a nap. This book was published by HarperCollins, so thank you very much to them for permission to read this awesome book. One Night in the Zoo. One magical moonlit night in the zoo. An elephant jumped in the air and flew, but nobody knew. Then a crocodile and a kangaroo set off on a bicycle made for two. Would you go on a bicycle with a crocodile? This one looks pretty friendly, but I don't, I don't know if I would do that. I might be a little too scared. But maybe he's very friendly. I don't know. And three lions did tricks which astonished anew, but nobody knew. Four bears cooked a squid and squidgeberry stew. Can you see those squidgeberries? Little multicolored speckles. They look pretty tasty. Which turned five flamingos from pink to blue. We've got a bunch of blue spots. Six rabbits climbed a giraffe for the view, but nobody knew. 
Would you do that with an umbrella? I don't know if I have an umbrella big enough to do that. Seven tigers sneezed. A chew, a chew, a chew, a chew, a chew, a chew, a chew. And their seven sneezes blew the feathers off a cockatoo. There's the cockatoo. You can see all of his feathers just flying off. Bet that makes it hard to fly. Eight monkeys stuck them back with glue, but nobody knew. That's very kind of them. Then in the sky, a pinkish hue broke through the dark, and as it grew, nine owls cried, Woo! Terry Witter, woo! The night is fading, quickly shoo! Back in your cages, all of you! Look at them, they're all hurrying back. The sun got up, the keeper too. Ten cocks crowed, cock-a-doodle-doo. He's coming quick, he's almost due. Do you think they're talking about him? I think so. The keeper and his trusty crew found all the animals back on view excepting only one or two. They look so tired, he said, all through the moonlit night, what did they do? But nobody knew. Except you, and here they are again. Wow, look at all that. You can see the flamingos with their little speckles after eating all of the bear squidgeberry stew, all of the rabbits with their umbrellas, and the tigers with their sneezes. Wow. What a great story. Thank you for joining me for story time. It was really great. And even though Lily and Oreo are back in their box, they really enjoyed hearing all of these stories about the zoo. It was just as good as their very own visit. And if you are just itching to read some more books about the zoo, I would suggest checking out Penguinot by Marcy Colleen, My Dad at the Zoo by Coralie Sauto, and Xander's Panda Party by Linda Sue Park, all of which are available to be checked out at the Ada Community Libraries. Thanks for watching.